artists. Today we're going to do a project that um, I think is a lot of fun and it's going to tell you a lot about yourself. Um, it's based on a book called The Shape of My Heart by Mark Sparing, illustrated by Alice Patterson. And when we do this project in a little bit, we're going to be working on um, our drawing and then we're going to do some coloring. We're also doing a lot of cutting. So you will need to have some scissors, you'll need to have some markers and colored pencils or crayons or something like that, um, and some glue. Uh, this is a collage project. So a collage usually means that you're bringing lots of different elements together and gluing them onto um, your background. So we're going to be making several pieces and parts that go along with this project. And then when you're all done, um, you should have a really cool piece of artwork. So again, the book is called The Shape of My Heart. It's written by Mark Sparing and illustrated by Alice Patterson. There we go, we have a little dinosaur. This is the shape that we are, the shape of you and me. Do you see how we have a person here and we have a little person here too? This is the shape of our eyes and these are the shapes we might see. You might see a plate, place setting, mittens, not too many around here, toy dinosaurs, plants, watermelon, Goldfish, lollipop, yummy, wibble wobble on the jello mold, plink if you put money into a piggy bank, crunch when you bite into your apple. This is the shape of the sun coming up to brighten our day. And these are the shapes that chirp and tweet and flitter, flutter away. Look at all those happy little birds. Chirp, chirp, tweet, tweet, flitter, flutter. This is the shape of our mouths. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, hi. Now, what would you like to eat? Something hot? Something savory, something cold or sweet. This is the shape of my shoes. And this is the shape of your feet. And these are the shapes that pass us by on a noisy, busy street. I'm guessing lots of you have taken walks with your parents and you see different kinds of cars, maybe some buses. I don't think I've ever seen quite, one quite like that. There's some tractors, trucks. This is the shape of my hand, the hand you hold on to. Where are we going and what will we see? Let's look at the shapes of the zoo. Brrr. Snap. Roar. Yes. Flap, flap. Squeak. Arr, arr. This is the shape I hear you with. Let's be on our way. And this is the shape we come back to at the very end of the day. At their home. This is the shape of the pillow where you lay your sleepy head. And this is the shape of the toy that you cuddle up with in bed. This is the shape of the moon. And these are the shapes of the stars. And this is the shape I love you with. This 
is the shape of my heart. So you can see in this heart all of those things that have been a part of their day and a part of their life. Those are the things that fill up the heart, um, the things that they love to do together. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a heart. We're also going to draw some pictures of some things that we love. So we might make a little list. I'm going to make a list of a bunch of things that I love and that kids have told me that they love. And then we'll figure out how to draw some things. We'll color them in and we will cut them out and glue them onto our heart. So let's have lots of fun together and we'll make our shapes of our hearts and think about lots of things that we love. Okay, so as we begin the project, what I want you to think about um, before we get started is this is kind of the idea of what we are going for. We looked at the book, The Shape of My Heart, and we have a heart here that's full of all different kinds of objects, um, things that we could think about, things that we enjoy. And so what I like to do to begin with is I like to make a list of things that we love. So I am going to make a list because we're not all together. I'm going to make a list of some of the things that I love. And some of you might love these things too. Um, a lot of them are things that I have made lists with with kids in the past. So things that always tend to come up in the things that we love are things like family, Um, pets, dogs, cats, fish, birds, turtles. Those are all sort of fun pets that people might have. Um, I love art. Some people love reading books. I love reading books. I love being out in the sunshine. Um, I love swimming. Sports, oops, I forgot the G, the N. Swimming, I-N-G. Um, sports are always fun, so soccer, basketball, running, um, football, lots of different sports out there, right? Baseball, Swimming is a sport. Um, so you can think of different things that you love like that. Um, maybe you like bike, biking, riding your bicycle. So biking or um, bicycle. Um, so many different kinds of things that we can love. So I have my family, I have pets to think about, I have art, books, sunshine, swimming, sports, all different kinds of sports, biking, bicycles. So think about things that might represent that. So it might be hard to draw running, but you could draw a sneaker. Um, or it might be hard to draw all kinds of art, but you could draw something like, this was a little paint palette and a paintbrush. Um, my family is, for me, it's my husband, myself, and my two boys. Um, I love being out in the sun. I love fish. I love dogs. Um, so there's lots and lots of different kinds of things that you could draw for, um, for things that you love. So I want you to make your list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw some of our favorite things. So for me, I'm just gonna turn my paper over. I'm gonna take my pencil. Um, I'm thinking about my list. I'm thinking about things that I love. 
And if I love my dog, um, I had a dog on here that I had drawn that is sitting, it's got big floppy ears, right? Um, it's got a long pointy nose. Um, if I wanna draw a cat, I could draw a cat by drawing a little arch, a little curve line, and it also tends to have a pretty long face, right? And they tend to have little pointed ears coming up like that, okay? Almond shaped eyes. This is kind of a small cat. We do have to think about putting it onto our heart that we're gonna make in a little bit. Here's my kitty cat. That's his face. Now, if I want to draw a long body, I can draw a body that comes out with a tail that curls up, right? I can draw legs coming off to the front. And I always, my kitty cat when I was growing up was always a little bit chubby. So they have a back leg. So you can see from my back leg, I did kind of an S shape and then came down, curve up, and connect back up to that tail. So I did sort of a triangle shaped face, triangle shaped ears, okay? I did sort of a rectangle coming off, but then I did the long wavy tail. I came back to the front, draw my line coming down, coming across, and then I stop it and I bring the leg down from the back. Now if you wanted to, you could draw a second little leg. Second little leg like that. Now, you don't have to do all of that. You could draw a kitty cat's face. You could draw it nice and big. So here's my kind of a nice big, just a kitty cat's face. Right, they have a, that triangle nose. And then they usually have kind of, for their mouth, it usually kind of looks a little bit like a little J, and a little backwards J. And it's got some whiskers coming off. Okay. A lot of our kitty cats have great big eyes. So we draw a little almond shape and then we can put a little circle inside of that. And then he needs his ears coming up. And that can be, and you can kind of fix it a little bit if you want to. That can be your kitty cat. If you want to draw a cat. Um, if you want to draw your family, you can draw, um, you know, and I would draw them all together. So here's my In my family, we have my husband, right? So there's his body. So I'm not just drawing stick figures. You can draw stick figures, those are fine. But if you wanna draw a body, you draw a circle for the head and then come down off of that to make your shoulders bring your shoulders around to end the arms right and then come back in the middle and make a body here in the middle then we can give him some legs right and some feet okay so there's one person and then I'm not as tall as my husband so I'm going to draw me a little bit shorter. I'm right here next to him so I just have one shoulder coming off. There's my body. There's my other arm because I do have two and my legs. And 
And our legs are always going to end up at about the same spot because we're all standing on the same ground. And then I have two boys and on my first picture they were shorter than me but now they're taller than both me and my husband. So here's one. He's really tall. Actually his waist should be higher than that. And here's one more person, my, my other son. He's not quite as tall as my oldest. But so everybody's family is gonna be a little bit different. You might have just your mom or just your dad. You might have six brothers and sisters. You might not have any brothers and sisters. And maybe you have cousins that you like to play with. All right, so then I have to think about this. My younger son has lots of hair. It's really long, although it kind of, and it's very, very curly. And he always wears a hoodie. So I'm gonna put a little hood back there. I have kind of long hair. And I'm not coloring them in yet. I'm not drawing lots of features or anything like that. My husband has short hair. And my oldest son has short hair. So you can see their ears. Right? So there's some hair. So there's a family. Okay. Um, if I wanted to draw the sun, Sun is easy. I can just draw a circle and I can have lots of triangles coming out from it. If I want to draw a book, I can draw a big rectangle, right? I can draw a line down the middle of it. And then I want to make it look like I've got pages there. See how I can make this little line come off and come down. And I can draw little lines going across it. And I can draw another little line coming this way and coming down. And now it kind of looks a little bit like a book. Or I could just draw a rectangle like this. And I could have a words going across here. My favorite book. Or whatever title you would like to put on your book. Okay. Um, if I like um, the ocean. I could draw something, I could draw some waves. So here's a wave, right? So I could just draw some little curved lines that make waves. So there's lots and lots of different kinds of things that you could do. You could draw a rainbow. Now, I've drawn everything in a regular pencil. You can start in a regular pencil if you want to. I'm going to color mine with some colored pencils. You get to decide what you want to color with. Um, so if I want to draw, if I want to color my cat realistic, I can do that. I don't have to, but I can if I want to. So maybe it's a brown and black kind of and white calico cat, right? So I can start thinking about the patterning on my cat. Maybe it's a stripy cat. Maybe you love elephants or maybe you love um, giraffes. Giraffes are one of my favorite animals at the zoo. Draw whatever you like to draw. 
color it in as best you can. And then you're going to cut them out and we're going to put them on a heart. So do your very, very best work coloring everything in nice and solid and strong using beautiful coloring. So if my kitty cat is calico, it might be a little bit of brown, might be a little bit of black. So I got to think about how that's going to work. I'm going to color in pretty much all the same direction. I'm not doing a lot of scribble scrabble coloring because I really don't like scribble scrabble, but a calico cat it's a little bit different because it's not all one color. It's going to have some little white areas. It's going to have some black. It has kind of a little bit of a tan kind of color. When I was a little girl, I had a cat named Patches. We named it Patches because it was calico. It was all different. Um, and then they have kind of um, sometimes they have kind of greenish color eyes. Sometimes they have kind of yellowy color eyes. So I'm going to give them some green eyes here. I think I made his nose a little bit big, but that's okay. I need to go back in with some black in the center of his eyes. that. I can always take my colored pencil and go over my pencil lines to make those a little bit more. I think they're supposed to be a part of the drawing. Don't have to do it with black. You could do it with another color. Kitty cats tend to have kind of pinkish or sometimes kind of tan color noses. So if this pink is too bright, you know what I can do? Remember how we mixed our colors in our caterpillars that we did? I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to layer just a tiny bit. I'm not coloring very dark. I'm just putting a little bit of that brown in over the pink. And that changes that just a little bit. Then I'm going to give him his little mouth in that pinky color. And because it's on top of the gray of my pencil, I'm not going to change that. Then I need to get his whiskers in there. Okay, so now I have a little calico kitty. Right? Is it perfect? It may not be perfect, but I think it's okay. I did a pretty good job on it. Now, if I were doing a rainbow, would I have to draw the rainbow shape first? No. I could just color the rainbow. I can use my red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple and make my rainbow. I can make my sun. I can color that in. Uh, I can color my book. If I want to color my waves, I have in my colored pencils. And you don't have to use colored pencils. That's just what I had available to me. So that's what I'm using. You could use markers, you could use crayons, you could use paint. Paint is going to have to dry before you cut it out, right? You can't cut wet paper, it doesn't cut very well. But I can use my any tools that I have available to me. That's what I should use for my project. All right, so now I've got some things colored. Um, I want you guys to color all of your items because you may be doing this at home. You can do a lot more than I have done. You, in my picture, I have five things and that's what I do in the classroom because that's usually about what we have time for. But if I'm doing this project at home, guess what? I could do as many things as I want to. If I wanted to put 10 things in that I love, as long as they fit on the heart, I can do 10 things. If they don't fit on the heart, I could do another heart and I could have two hearts full of love, right? 
So there's lots and lots of different ways to go about doing this project. So I'm coloring in my waves now. And I decided I wanted to use both of my colors of blue. Because when you go to the ocean, it isn't always just one color out there. Water is all different kinds of colors of blue. Sometimes a little bit green too. So go in and color everything as best you can. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the heart that we're gonna glue these down onto. Okay, artist. Um, so once you have finished coloring your pictures and I have finished coloring most of mine, I also added in some music. Um, my family, we look angry. We're really not a very angry family. We're a pretty happy family. But um, so I finished coloring most of my pictures. I didn't color this cat because I had already colored this one. Um, I put some darker lines on for my book. I colored in my sun. I used some yellow and some orange there. I colored in my rainbow. I've got my waves here. So we're gonna, we're gonna set this aside and then we're going to cut out our heart. Now, what I want you to do today is we're gonna try cutting a heart out. So here's my piece of paper and I'm gonna show you the wrong way to do it and the right way to do it. Um, so I have a bigger piece of paper. This is what I'm gonna actually use for my, for my big heart, okay, that I'm putting everything on. So I've got my big piece of paper. I'm going to fold it in half. All right. Now it's really important that you know where your fold is, which is the line that you're going to press down. Like I'm pressing down this here, right? So I took my big piece of paper. I bring one side, one edge over to the other edge. I get here in the middle and I press down on that seam. This is my open edge, okay? Don't do anything yet. Right now I want you to watch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a half of a heart. So to draw a half of a heart, I'm gonna come down a little bit from the edge there. I'm not making a line, I'm just bringing my pencil down because I wanna come close to the top here. So I wanna come from that fold close to the top here close to the side over here. See how it's going nice and round? Okay, and then I'm gonna curve in or angle in all the way back to the fold. If I make a little bump there, no big deal, right? Okay, so you can see that I've drawn this line. It curves around, 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 and then it kind of angles back in towards the fold. The reason that it's important to start at the fold and not out here, to always make sure that you're using the fold. Here's my piece of paper. I fold it in half, okay? Here's my fold. Here's my open edge. If I start my heart over here on the open edge, curve around, 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 back down to that edge, and I haven't paid attention and I did it on my fold edge, when I go to cut this out, okay, my scissors are gonna follow right along the line. My monster eating, or my line eating monster, right, just cuts only the paper, goes right along the line, da 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 da. I'm doing a really nice job of staying on my line. When I'm all done, because I did not stay on that folded edge, this is my folded edge over here, I have two halves of a heart. Guess what? That's okay. I can fix that. I can get some tape and I can tape that together. No biggie piggy, right? I take my tape and line up my heart and I can tape it together and that's fine. But what I'd like for you to think about doing to try to do is to start your half of a heart okay so here's my fold here's my open side here's my fold i start at the fold i go up 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 
around and then I come back down to the fold. I don't come down to the bottom. I come back to the fold. That way, when I follow with my line eating monster, also known as my scissors, and I cut, and I'm doing a really, really nice job of staying right on my line. Little cuts as I go. Then when I go to open this out, I have a big heart, just like this. Now, I drew on this side. You can't see much of it, but you can see a little bit of my drawn line. So when I go, I'm going to make sure that my pieces go on this side, not on the side where I drew my line. Okay, I have my family. I have books, I have a cat, I have water, I have sunshine, I have a rainbow. Lots of things that I can think about cutting out. If I have time, if I want to, I can cut each individual line, right? But guess what? That takes a really long time, okay? What I can also do, instead of cutting out each individual line, because that is a lot of work, takes a long time, you can practice. It's a good, it is really good practice for using your scissors. If you make a mistake and accidentally cut something off, you can always do a little paper surgery and, uh, glue it right back on when you put it on the heart. Okay, but see how long it takes. And actually I'm going to cut this apart here because it's making it a little tricky for me with that sunshine. I'm going to cut it apart there. I'm using good scissor skills and I'm practicing and that's a good thing to do, but if you're running out of time or if you need to do some other stuff, if you need to work on some other important skills, not your scissor skills today, there's another way that you can do this that doesn't take quite as long. So I'm going to finish my sunshine, but if I were to try to cut my family out like I cut the sunshine out, that would really take a long time because there's lots of bumps and curves and I don't want to accidentally cut somebody's foot off or something like that. Um, what I can do is I can draw a line, kind of a little bubble line, right? It goes all the way ar around my family like that. Then again, using my best cutting skills, following right along my little bubble line, I can cut out the picture of my family. And I'm not having to try to cut in between people's heads, I'm not having to cut around hands and shoes and legs, because that gets really, really tricky with all those curves. using my good skills, using my line eating monster, I cut out a little bubble of my family. So that goes there. My sunshine can go here. I can cut out <clears throat> my waves. And again, my waves are gonna be another one that's gonna be a good one to draw a bubble around because trying to get into those curves with my scissors is going to be really tricky and I don't really want to do that. So I can draw a little bubble
cut that out like that. And that's pretty good. Maybe I do want to cut in just a little bit right there because then I don't have that straight edge. All right. So I can do that. So I have my family. I have sun. I have waves. I can cut out the, mu the music for this one. That's pretty easy. Be careful, see how I just accidentally marked on my heart? I'm trying to do this in view of my camera for you, but I would not recommend drawing on top of your artwork. Okay, so there's four things. Let me cut out one more. Let me cut out my rainbow, because I love color. I love rainbows. Now this one's an easy one to cut out right on my line. I don't have to do a bubble around it. It's really easy to just cut just like that. Okay, so now I have five things. You could do more than five things. You could do less than five things. We need to glue these down. Um, and you guys should all know the rule, dot, dot, not a lot or just a dot, not a lot, okay? So I'm gonna put a few dots down. One dot's not gonna be quite enough, but I'm gonna glue my music down. My family's gonna need more dots. That's a big piece of paper. If I put one dot here in the middle, that's not gonna hold it. So I need to do one, two, three dots along the bottom. One, two, maybe three, four more dots going around. So now I've got it all the way around, but I haven't wasted a lot of glue. I'm not gonna have any oozy glue. I don't want oozy glue, that's a mess. So there's my family. The sun is a little trickier. Sun, I want one little dot in the middle, then maybe I want one teeny tiny dot. Orange tip always touches the paper on my sun rays. So I want those to stay down. I'm not putting it all the way at the edge because that edge is teeny, that point is teeny tiny, right? So one little dot, oops, I got a little bit off, but that's okay. Maybe I'll put this right on top of that. And then I have to turn it over. Did I get a little glue on me? No big deal. Okay, very little glue ooze. I don't want glue ooze, that makes a mess. So all of my little pieces get glued on. And then if I want to, I can go through and I can write, I love at the top. somewhere in the middle. I can use my favorite color as long as my favorite color is not red. If it's red, it might be a little bit tricky to show up on my red heart. I can write, I love family music sunshine beach or ocean or waves um, and rainbows or color whatever that represents for you so now you have your heart you can fill it up with all the shapes of the things that you love and um, you have a beautiful piece of artwork thanks for working hard today